Hello, I'm Heather Hitchens, president of the American Theatre Wing. Welcome to Masterclass. For more than a century, the Wing has advanced the art form of theater by investing in brave work, supporting creativity, and creating pathways into the industry for young, aspiring theater makers, both on stage and off. Our Masterclass series provides you, our participants, with the opportunity to learn directly from masters of our industry. No two paths are alike, and I think you'll find each guest's experience is rich with information uniquely useful to you as you chart your own course in the American theater. Thank you for joining us and please enjoy. Hello and welcome everyone to the American Theater Wing's Masterclass. My name is Jenny Gorlick and I am the staff producer here at the Wing. I'm so thrilled that you could join us for the second of our new series of interactive live streamed masterclasses. Tonight's class is very exciting. It's on singing for non-singers and it will feature three incredible participants and graduates of the American Theater Wings programs. At the end of the class, we will have time for a question answer section. So please feel free to submit any questions that you may have in the comments. And if you don't mind, please tell us where you're watching from. We would love to know where you are. And now, without further ado, I am honored to introduce this evening's teacher. World-renowned vocal coach, Liz Kaplan, has been teaching and coaching voice in New York City and around the world for over 40 years. Her proprietary vocal techniques and holistic vocal coaching style have made her the first choice for industry professionals seeking a trusted source of vocal empowerment. Her students appear on Broadway, as recording artists, and on television and film. Many have gone on to win the industry's most prestigious awards. Liz also frequently collaborates with Broadway productions, major record labels, TV and film companies, directors, composers, and arrangers on current projects, as well as those in development. Her current roster of projects includes serving as the vocal consultant to Tina, the Tina Turner musical, Moulin Rouge, Disney's Aladdin, The Book of Mormon, and Dear Evan Hansen, as well as the vocal supervisor for Ain't Too Proud. Liz has also worked on films such as The Greatest Showman, starring Hugh Jackman, Disney Pixar's Coco, The Prom, In the Heights, and the upcoming Dear Evan Hansen film. Most recently, she prepared Andrew Garfield, who had never sung in his life, for his starring role in the film adaptation of Tick, Tick, Boom, premiering on Netflix this fall. The combination of Liz's unparalleled knowledge of historic vocal pedagogy and her unprecedented access to the creators of pop culture puts her in the unique position to prepare her students for industry needs, needs with the goal of balancing the state of the artist. And I am so thrilled that she's here with us today. I'm going to bring her on screen. Hello, Liz. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. I need you today as my voice is not 100%. <laughs> well, you've been doing a lot of talking and a lot of communicating technological aspects of this class and the <laughs> series. So the voice does tend to get a little toasty after a while. She's a little toasty for sure. <laughs> so Liz, uh, we're so excited for the class. What will we be doing today? I'm equally thrilled to be here and so honored to have been asked by the wing to participate in this series. It is truly an honor. Um, today's class is entitled Singing for Non-Singers, which I find so amazing and so challenging, especially to the participants this evening. This is a class geared toward obviously helping uh, people with not a lot of singing experience, little to none, mm -hmm. and trying to see if we can make little mini miracles happen by way of some breathing and stretching series that gears especially toward everything vocal muscularly, mm -hmm. as well as some exercises to help ground and anchor both the uh, singing performer mm -hmm. and also the muscles of the voice as well which will help assuage nerves and any kind of um, just uh, sense of, I would say, nervousness. Yeah. Um, which all of us go through. I mean, literally, I mean, I have, I have a little bit of like 
little nerve endings happening. As Me too. Say. I know. I think, we're on screen now. And we're a little nervous. Human. It's right. human to go through it. But, you know, it's how we use the nerves that I think really best informs what ends up coming out of us. And the thing I definitely wanted to say, just in terms of summing up the classes, the vulnerability of people who have not had the opportunity to sing, much less mm -hmm. in front of a very vast audience, right. is so striking to me because vulnerability in any case is not a negative thing. No. It is. It allows people to feel emotionally porous and as well be very in touch with like what's going on externally mm -hmm. around them. So there's a really nice mix of fear, but also excitement that we could put together and use as something that is very positive. Amazing. I mean, I definitely am feeling a little bit of the fear, a little bit of the excitement. Yeah, same here. Oh. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I used to talk about this for years and years. It's like, is it anxiety or is mm -hmm. it excitement? And it's like, you kind of say, hmm, they mm -hmm. could be absolutely interchangeable. Right. And it just depends on how we're using it. And I'm so excited. Exactly to see us make some magic today with our three participants. Yes, me too. So I'm very excited to introduce them. Our first participant is Kiara Jones. She's an actor and ATW Springboard NYC 2019 alum. She graduated from Clark Atlanta University where she studied theater. Welcome, Kiara. Hi. Hi, Kiara. And our next participant, who I'm so excited to introduce, is Maria Jose Zuniga, an actor and ATW Springboard NYC 2017 alum. She graduated from NYU Tisch, majoring in drama. Here is Maria Jose. Hello. And finally, joining us, we have Gloria Cardona, an actor and ATW Springboard NYC 2015 alum. She graduated with a BFA from New World School of the Arts and just graduated with her MFA in theater arts performance from the Mason Gross School of the Arts. Here's Gloria. Oh my goodness, hi. <laughs> I think everyone can unmute. How are we feeling? Good, nervous, but excited. <laughs> that's so great. Nervous but excited, that's, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's allowed. I mean, listen, when, we, when we're nervous, but basically stress creates acid. And so I think what ends up happening is you think you're all mucusy, but it's probably just acid. So you just want to do little gentle like you just did. Little. <clears throat> I call them little furball coughs so you don't go fully into a clearing of the throat. Right. A gentle like a kitty gentle like. nudging <laughs> of whatever's on there to like get off. Okay. Thank so. you. I'm going to pop out and Liz, I will hand it over to you to lead us in a vocal warm up. Fantastic. Thank you, Jenny. So what I'd like to do and for everybody watching, uh, please feel free to participate. Um, I, I, I always open up my lessons with a stretch and breathing series. What I love about the thought of not jumping into singing is you don't really have a sense of where your body and breath are as soon as you walk into either a class or a rehearsal or a lesson. So it's really, um, I think, very um, formidable to try to like get the body and breath coordinated. So by the time you sing, you already feel nearly halfway there so that you're not as surprised when sound comes out of your mouth because you got in balance with your muscular skeletal system, with your lungs and respiratory system. So I'd love for everyone to participate. So here's how we'll start. I suggest standing. I'll be sitting so I could gear up for all of you. And what we're gonna do is stand with your legs hip width apart. Knees are nice and soft. And immediately try to tuck the tailbone, not the pelvis, but try to tuck the tailbone ever so subtly under. What you'll start feeling immediately is the rib cage dropping in. And as a result of that, the nervous systems, all nervous systems in our body start calming down because we're not in that fight or flight posture, which does start making us feel a little like we're on the borderline of crazy. So when you tuck under, it automatically makes you start feeling like the breath is coming in more deeply. So just even take a couple of gentle breaths here. 
And if you want, try to untuck the tailbone, kind of go back into like even a slight arch, breathe in, feel how the breath comes up really high. And if you relax a little, tuck the tailbone under, and then you breathe in again. It's a very normal, gentle, calming breath that allows you to sort of think, okay, that would be the breath I wanna find as often as possible when I'm singing. And also in life when you're speaking as well, especially on days when you have to talk a lot because we all do tend to get very worked up and like we lift up and we're arched in our spine and we're no longer really connected to all the nervous systems. Okay, so we're knees are soft, tailbone is gently under. Let's interlace the hands at the base of the skull. And then we start with the elbows in parallel. And we're gonna breathe in through the nose as we open up the arms. So inhale through the nose. And then we're gonna exhale, closing the elbows on sh, sh. Yeah, and this is gonna be different for everybody. So just take your time with this. And then inhale again, opening up the elbows, feel the ribs opening up and then exhale. The thing you want to be aware of here is when you're opening up the elbows, try not to arch the back again. So keep the tailbone tucked as we open up. Yes, and then exhaling again. Very nice. One more time. Feel how much air comes in by the last time we do this. And then exhale. So your lung capacity is just getting more and more advanced. And now we stay here in parallel, right where we are. Let's have a breath here. And then chin drops to the chest and we're gonna curl down the spine. So you might be out of camera range for just a little bit, dropping over, just take your time. Make sure the chin is dropped in so you're lengthening the head and the neck. I'm gonna just pop out and watch you guys. Yeah, and if you can do this in one breath, great. If you need several breaths to breathe in and then start curling down the spine, let the chin drop down, 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 down. And then when you're down there, take your time, yeah? Take all the way down and Kiara, yeah, but drop all the way down the spine. And I'll, I'll talk everybody through this so they kind of know what you're doing. And then when you get down to the base of the spine, let the hands and arms release. And just go ahead and shake your head very gently, side to side. Right, left and right, left and right. And then you could shake it right, left, right, left. Just getting the cervical vertebra of the spine released. Then gently nod the head up and down a few times. Just feeling the lengthening of the head, neck, and upper back. And then stabilize your whole body and center. Stay where you are. Take a breath in here. On the exhale, let's have you walk your feet into a nice wide open position. So the feet are opening up. And then when you're ready, take another breath in through the nose. On the exhale, let the hip flexors crease. And what that means is gently put yourself into a slow motion squat. So drop into that squat. Keep the head and neck released in this case. Good, I'm loving hearing the breathing, breathing in through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Then take another breath in. On the exhale, just shift your weight gently onto the heels of your feet so you feel a little more squared, but the head and neck are released still. Then we'll take a breath in through the nose. On the exhale, let the hips come back up and keep the torso remaining dropped. Very nice, you guys. And then when you're ready, have a breath in through the nose. On the exhale, we walk the feet back into parallel. Let's grab behind the ankles with your hands. Keep the head and neck released. Breathe in through your nose. And on the exhale, we're going to fold the torso in to meet the legs. So you're hugging your upper and lower body, but making sure your head and neck are not locking up. And use the exhale to inform the movement towards your legs. Very nice breathing. And then same thing, we inhale, fold in one more time, gently 
torso to legs with the chin dropped into the chest. Let's have you breathe in. And on the exhale, we slowly start coming up to standing, taking your time. Just use the breath if you need to breathe in again for whatever reason, nerves, or just you need some more air. That's totally, totally acceptable. And when you get up to center, relax the shoulders, head, neck, and have a breath however you'd like, through your nose, through your mouth. Either one is wonderful. How does everybody feel? Good. Good. What I love doing is this is this is like the feedback portion for me in terms of my classes and lessons because I want you to hear how your voice dropped in even more so than prior to doing this because you stretched the spine, got the lungs opening and closing, got the ribs out of the way. And also when we drop our hips down and then shift them back and dropping them down a little more, we actually access and address the adrenal glands, which are our forward movement. And also when the adrenals are weak, we feel very, very tired and listless. It's a really great way to reboot and reset. And especially the human voice needs to keep feeling like it's purposely moving forward, much like the body. And a lot of times you feel like, I have no idea why my voice feels cut in half. It feels very shallow. It doesn't feel like me. Sometimes it's just a matter of making sure the, the adrenal glands get a little bit more energy back into them. So that squat is a really good tool to like reboot yourself, even in a pinch. So, all right, the next thing we're going to do before we make sound, and everyone always feels foolish doing this, so you'll be amongst friends, we're going to do some tongue stretches. The tongue is, at the base of the tongue, is so powerful, and even though the tongue is an involuntary muscle, it wants to pull back and block airflow through our throat. So what ends up happening, and I'm sure we all have experienced this, why is my neck suddenly grabbing on? Why are all these compensatory muscles grabbing on when I go to sing? And a lot of the time, the culprit is the tongue. So what we're going to do is kind of exploring how we can actually fatigue the base of the tongue so it gets out of the way of breath flow through our larynx and vocal cords and doesn't make a pit stop because the tongue is holding on. So let's stretch the tongue outside the mouth, side to side. So it's gonna feel like almost like a wagging motion. So outside the mouth. Uh -huh. And then inside the cheek, side to side. So let the tongue do the same thing it did on the outside, but on the inside of the cheeks. And then let's roll the tongue around the teeth in one direction. And then let's go the opposite way. You'll probably feel this. This is usually killer for most people. And then let's go back the other way. I see the looks in people's eyes where they're like, I cannot believe I am this tight here. Mm hmm. And let's go back again the opposite way. And the news here is that we hope it starts to let go a little bit and then back one more time. And then if you're able, wagging the tongue gently outside the mouth. And if that is, is a tricky one, all of you seem to be doing great. For anybody having an issue with the tongue at the base is still not quite letting go, what you could think about is two different uh, combinations of sounds. You could think of a silent ya, 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 because the tongue is moving up and down, or la, 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 without speaking. And that gives you a sense of the tongue, certainly at the front, middle, and like almost back of letting go. How did that feel for everyone? exhausting in a way yes i expect that to be the case yeah. and that's what we want this is the case where we actually want to fatigue a specific muscle and i will give a little heads up too if anybody you guys in front of me and people listening and watching if you're feeling that the tongue is not very quick to let go i can almost guarantee 
that there's probably a little tension in the neck, which most of us struggle with. It just happens. I think a lot of it has to do with our iPhones and like kind of doing this and like reaching out and all the crazy positioning we put our necks in. So C2, the cervical vertebra two, right outside the divot of the skull is connected to the tongue and sinuses and auditory nerve and the, and the forehead. So when the tongue is locking up, it could be because back here is locking up. So you can just go ahead and just do gentle figure eights for the base of your skull. Yeah. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is let's dive in. I think we lost Maria Jose. Hopefully she'll come back. Yeah. Oh, and we're back. <laughs> I'm I'm present. I'm just really lightheaded. Would you give oh, me? Oh, did you get oh, lightheaded goodness. from the releasing of the tongue? I need one minute. I'm so. Oh sorry. yeah, please take a seat and have water. Take some water and also relax your neck. Wow, that's a powerful exercise, Liz. It's very powerful. I I haven't had anybody get lightheaded from that, but I understand there's um a vasovagal connection, the vasovagal nervous system, mm -hmm. the vagus nervous system, that sometimes if a muscle is moving that has never been moved before, it kind of shocks the body up and down. Mm -hmm. Wow. Be okay, I'm pretty po positive about that. I, be I believe it, but oh my goodness, super time Maria Jose, and I'm gonna pop back out and then I think we move on to our third exercise. Yes, we could, this'll be, this'll be the vocal warm up. So um, Maria, Maria Jose can catch up when she pops on. So what I'd love to do with all of you is one of my favorite things to do initially is to just give you a sense of what your vo voice feels like on individual notes before we go crazy and start moving it. So I want you to feel how you're pocketing all your sounds before we move them. And what I also like to have people experience because I find it very helpful is feeling yourself actually vibrating so you know energetically you're sending that vibration out into the world when you're singing. So what we're gonna do is an exercise on hum, mum, 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 mum. And we don't have to sustain very much at the end of it. It's more ha huh, is a nice sort of cleanser for the lungs. The M is to experience the sinus resonators and your skull and bone resonators. So if you want, you could touch the top of your heads and think just Can you feel some vibration inside your skull there? Yes. Most excellent. So what we're doing is another major reason for me to start with this is that we're going to be doing communication from the chest resonator into the sinus and skull resonator without the neck and throat and larynx starting to try to grab. So it's literally mm -hmm. almost doing this. So very gently, we're gonna start. I'll play the first note, then we'll all sing it together. We're gonna do hum, 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 hum. And allow yourself just to buzz on that M. Are you ready? Let's see how we do with this together. And. Yeah, so hum, mum, 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 mum. Hum, mum, mum, mum. Yeah, there are five notes. Okay. Here we go. Hum, mum, 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 mum. Are you, are you feeling like you're with me or is there a delay? It's a slight delay on my end. I'm not sure. All right. So you know what? Let's let's do this like I've been doing all pandemic year and a half, where I'll play the chord and you just you just sing it on your okay. own. So okay. I'll give you like a little signal. So we'll have the chord and hum mum 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 mum. Good. Yeah, I hear the delay. We'll we'll make it work. Hum, mum, 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 mum. Yes. Hum, mum, 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 mum. Beautiful. 
Um, 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 um. Yes. Um, 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 um. Whether it's delay or what, we just missed a half step here. So let's okay. come down. Ready? Yeah. Um, 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 um. Yes. And you know what? You could let the hands and arms go. Let's see if that helps because I feel like it's maybe lifting the rib cage up a little bit. So let's relax there and continue. Um, um, um. Ready? Um, 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 um. Good. Let's try to do one more together. Um, 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 um. And we're going to come down the scale. Um, 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 um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing the note and see if you can hear it. There we go. And great. And honestly, the most important thing is that you're starting to allow yourself to feel. Uh, kind of opening up the chest and the M vibrating in your skull. Coming down. Yes. Good, let's do three more of these. I'm feeling like I'm losing you on the pitch. So keep remembering, it's the same note every single time. And just keep trying to repeat that pitch and feel it in your body. So it feels that hum, hum. It's very relaxed and you don't have to work very hard for this one. Here we go. Much better, much better. One last one here. Yes, are you hearing are you hearing the piano okay or is there a delay happening? I can hear the piano. You can. Okay. Little, yeah. Little, yeah. Yeah. That that was a tricky one to technologically figure out. All right. <laughs> How's everybody feeling so far? Loose. <laughs> yeah. What I want you to do is this is you're not being judged here. This is for your own sense of like what is my voice? How does it work? Hum, we all hum around the house occasionally. This is taking the hum and just like expanding it a little bit and getting you to feel uh, like if you were a kid just sort of trying to imitate uh, uh, Tarzan and then getting the M um, 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 vibrating in your skull and then putting it together so you're not tensing up any neck muscles or your throat. Okay, the next one, I was gonna do the same repeated note exercise into another exercise, but I think with the technology we have, it's gonna to be too complicated. So let's go ahead and do something that's a little chewier now. And what I'd like to do is have you sing, me, we, we. Here we go. Me, me, me. Yay, good. And the E and O exercise is really very cool and helpful because on the E, the larynx comes up, the voice box, and on the O, it gently drops in. So we're starting to get some flexibility in here. Let's keep going. Me, me, me. Good, continuing. Me, me. What I'd like to do, Gloria, is 
Can I ask you about your sinuses? Are they sometimes shut down a little bit? Allergies, things like that? I have allergies all the time. So what I'm hearing from you is most of the time you're on pitch, but then I lose you a little bit. And what I start thinking is that the sinuses shut totally down and you didn't have enough room inside the mouth cavity to get some space in there. So what I'd love for all of us to do is let's just go ahead and individually breathe, hold on to one nostril and breathe in through the other. And then relax. And then opposite nostril, breathe in through the nostril. And relax. And then the same thing again, breathe in the opposite side and relax and then the same thing the opposite side once more and relax and let's see what happens now with the me we is that me we we here we go me you me you me that was completely better that was completely different. Sometimes when the sinuses are super jammed, and I know we all struggle with this, and especially when the weather is so um, sticky out and muggy and humid, everything gets very inflamed. So you really don't have enough room for the larynx to tilt, which is what it's doing when we're singing these notes, because it comes up and then it feels like it's smashing into your spine. We want to get the mouth cavity as open as possible and let this be definitely very chewy so we're going to do here we go me, you, me, you, me. yes and it's me you, we you me, yes. me, usually when it happens try not to fight it don't be apologetic about it let it go and try not to control it because that's when you start getting into tension and trouble so let it go and gradually things will start getting nice and lubricated and moving let's come down the scale from here ready me, 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 me. good And then the same thing, snip in and relax. And then let's breathe and sing. Ready? It corrects the pitch every time. So if in doubt, make sure the sinuses are working. Coming down the scale, you're doing but great, both of you. And here we go. kind of see not very lightheaded but i also feel very open here that's right the e especially is the vowel that opens up the front of the face and the oo is what helps us kind of drop into our bodies a little bit more <clears throat> so we're just getting the chewiness is just to kind of get it's getting the jaw moving and release as well as the larynx dropping up and down 
Is everything okay? Yes, I'm back with great news. Maria Jose is great. She's better. If Maria Jose, you want to come back? Our brand. Right. I'm Maria so Jose. sorry that exercise did you in. I mean, I got many reactions from that exercise, but never quite a fainting spell. Did you did you come back okay? I'm I'm okay and yes, I I've, I'm lucky enough that I I've, I've never fainted in my life, but I think that that was the closest I've ever gotten. So now this I know what that's scary. like. It's very it was very frightening. I'm very embarrassed. Um thank you for you your You should not though. be embarrassed. Let me tell you something. I do these exercises every single day of my teaching life in all circumstances with individuals, in rehearsals. I've had people literally, literally go falling over because they got so open and air started moving so much that they dropped over. But the main reason, the main thing that happens with these exercises is that people, people's jaws suddenly seize up or their occipital lobe back here at the base of the skull goes oh, and grabs. But as soon as I saw your face, I was like, okay, take a minute, grab some water, right. sit with yourself. And there's a reaction, it's called vasovagal, and it's literally the vagus nerve system, which goes all the way up and down to like get the breathing and singing mechanisms moving. But that part of the tongue movement in that vertebra there is all connected there. So you probably just had a very extreme reaction. It felt like, you know what, um, you, you mentioned stress earlier in relation to acid. Um, it, it felt like something was, you, you know, maybe like I had a demon back here that just like was exercised in a way, just like. I don't doubt that for one minute. Of the year, perhaps, that was just like lodged in there. I haven't been in a, in a live space like this, you know, where you're just focused on breath. For, uh, right. I mean, yeah. it's quite it's Forever. quite something, right? When you think about, you, we're breathing. We hope every day, every minute. Otherwise, we'd be not here. But when you're actually super hyper concentrating on it, suddenly you're suddenly realizing, oh, I'm opening up places that have been holding on, and then suddenly, suddenly letting go, and then the brain doesn't know what to do with how open that is. And so then you almost you're, cool. you're amongst the best of them that have fainted from all of a sudden breathing. How many people do we know that have done yoga or especially hot yoga and they like come out of the class and they just go whoop and be so much breath, so much heat, so much sudden movement in the body when it hadn't done that before that it was really new. And I can guarantee that that probably won't happen again when, when you do that tongue stretch. So don't be afraid of it. <laughs> okay. So since we have uh, Maria Jose back, Let's dive in and do a couple of more things. Let's, I'd like to do uh, a, a short arpeggio just to kind of get some movement. And all of this is so that when you sing your specific songs for me, that you feel like you already got moving. It's not like you're singing them cold. So what I'd like to do is an arpeggio on yaga, ya, 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 ya. And yaga is very, I don't know where you are in the country. Where are you guys? I'm in New York. Yeah, in New York. Uh huh. And then Gloria, I, I lost your sound. No sound. Jenny, it. Jenny, do you want to jump in? <laughs> Hear me now. There yes. you are. Yeah, there you are. Ah, there you are. Hi, I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> so you're gonna. Third time's the charm. And Kiara, are you in Georgia now? No, I'm in Mississippi now. You're in Mississippi. Okay, so what I'm about to say is going to be a little foreign to you, but in New York, New Jersey, the tri-state area here, in, in the, the Broadway area, a lot of us do a lot of slang speak because we're so used to not having to say the full sentence. And we always say, instead of like, do you have it? We say, you got it? Like, you got it? Like, it's it's quicker and it's definitely slangy. So this you got is really cool because it connects sinuses into the tongue movement. Don't be scared, Maria Jose. And then into the chest. You ne you're never, gonna, no, it's, you don't, I'm telling you, it's not, you don't have to be afraid of your tongue ever again. Um, so what this is, is ya ga, you can feel how the hard consonant of ga really gets the tongue 
engaged and dropped. So it kind of gives you a little more anchoring in your body and voice. So the exercise is the following. It's yaga, ya, 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 ya. And as you can see, it's yaga, ya, ya. And ya, ya, kind of give yourself a chance to kind of play with that for a second. Ya, ya, ya. It's an ea. So you're getting the e of the sinus resonators connecting with the ah uh, of the chest resonators and the hard G of yiga, just make sure our tongue gets out of the way. So let's try it together. It's going to be this. Yiga, yiga, ya. Great. And let's continue on together. Ready? And. Yes, do the best you can with what you're hearing. I'll play it. We're gonna get this down for next year. Harmonizing. I'll play. I'll play along with you. Ready? Good. Continuing. Now, if these notes up here scare you, try to see even if they're breathy, because these are all brand new for you and so are the exercises. Allow even if you could vocalize on like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just as long as you're not holding your breath or holding on to your muscles or tensing anything to try to quote reach that sound. All right, so can we try it together? Here we go. And you go. You're making it work. That's great. Continuing. And ready? You go. Should we go one more? What do you think? Here we go. Good, you guys. You're doing it. And you can see what we're doing. What's scary about this for so many is that there is nothing blocking your throat here. You're literally open. Literally, if you floss from your mouth to the back of your head, you'd be completely open and nothing is getting in the way. So let's come down the scale from that. And you got, ready? I'll do it with you. You got, you got, yeah, 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 yeah. Coming down further. And you got, you got, yeah, 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 yeah. You got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got. Now, why don't we go ahead and pick this up and give it a little clip happening. And we'll just kind of move it. I'll do it one time so you can feel it. You got, yeah, yeah. So you're not overthinking it too much, right? And ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing the best we can with being all over the country and on tech here. And coming down, ready? And yeah, 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 yeah. And as we come down into a more comfortable range for most of you, let's make sure you are being aware of what the tongue is doing on the yaga, ya, ya, so that the tongue, you'll realize, cannot possibly pull back because we're keeping it so very busy. So let's come down further. And ready? Yaga, ya, 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 ya. Continuing. And. Yaga, ya, 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 ya. We'll go with the pace that works for everyone. Here we go. And. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, think about what the tongue is doing here. And yeah, And let's do one more. Here we go. And Give yourself a round of applause for vocalizing in a technological situation. 
quagmire, if you will. <laughs> really well done. Okay, so basically what happens next is we get a chance to start working on our material and thinking about, you don't have to think about the exercises clearly when you're singing, you wanna be in the moment of the song, but think of how your body and voice feel kind of warmed and connected to itself at this point. We did our breathing and stretching, dropped over, gently came back up. We kind of moved through the head and neck. And also we stretched the tongue to kind of get it aware and out of the way. So, and then with yaga, ya, ya, we got a chance to really keep the tongue very engaged so that it could not pull back. So you get to experience what actually an open throated sound feels like. All right, so Jenny, do you want to pop on and introduce Kiara? Since I go do. First? So thank you all so much for participating in that part of the thank class. Thank you. Oh my goodness, yeah. everyone was so wonderful. I hope everyone at home was having fun participating along. Same and, here. <laughs> and oh, now no. we're going to get into our individual performances. And first is going to be the lovely Kiara. So I'm going to say goodbye to Gloria and Maria Jose for the moment. And Kiara, how are you feeling? Hi, I feel very open. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. And do you feel almost a little less um, nervous about the performance that you're going to give because we did so much sort of preparing the body, mind, voice? Y yes, in a, in a sense, yes. I do feel like a little more calm and balanced. So. That's exactly what I'd love to hear. And honestly, it's not anything you have to tell, you know, a fib about. It's like this, these exercises are really to kind of get internally connected to the nervous system. So you could do your best work as best as you're able. Okay. So I feel very connected. I do. I'm glad. Great. <laughs> I'm going to pop out. Kira, if you feel ready with your tech to sing, I think it's your moment. Okay. Yes, and, and Kira, feel free to introduce what you're going to be singing. Uh, if it's from a production, feel free to mention that if you feel comfortable. And then yes. just pop your, your recording on and let's do it. Woo! Yay! <laughs> um, I'll be singing I Know Where I've Been from Hairspray. Great. Whenever you're comfortable and ready. <clears throat> okay. One second. <laughs> Take your time, drink water. There's a light in the darkness, though the night is black as my skin. There's a light burning bright, showing me the way. But I know where I've been. There's a cry in the distance. It's a voice that comes from deep within. There's a cry asking why. I pray the answer's up ahead Cause I know where I've been Good job, how do you feel? <laughs> Yay, I feel so much better. <laughs> no, I really would like to say to you just okay. for your own knowledge mm -hmm. is that I heard the videos that you made mm -hmm. to participate in this and it already sounds different than the initial video. I was thinking that as I went along, I was like, I, cause I tried to remember the video that I sent in and I'm like, okay, after the exercise, let's see what changed. I also felt like more connected to the words. I felt more connected to my voice than when I sent the video. So I definitely feel a change already. As do I, and I, I was so, so pleased from the minute you started. So the thing that we could start talking about is how 
your approaching. I love the quality of your voice. It's really rich and it's really has like a sandy kind of quality and nobody should touch that because it's very unique. The thing I'd like to do is give you a little more focus. Okay. So at the ends of lines, you're kind of dropping off. And when I say dropping off, it feels like at the end of a line, like when you're speaking to somebody, you don't want to say, I'm speaking to somebody and lose the ends of the phrase. There's a sense of, yeah, I don't think it needs to be punctuated, but I think your head wants to sort of go in the direction of the musical line and drop down. So if you think about, I wrote down from the beginning, there's a light. It's almost like you want to see that light and you want us to see that light. So think about seeing the light as you're singing about it and sort of send the light out for all of us. Okay. I think as an acting exercise, that's gonna be great, but you'll see how the voice immediately responds to sort of a focus. Okay. Um, And showing me the way, also your head kind of dropped down and it's like showing me the way. It's like, show me the way, which way are we going? Are we going straight ahead or are we going down? Okay. So I think, honestly, I just wrote down ends of lines. And I think what happens is you lose breath by dropping your head down and sort of closing up your throat. Imagine, and I want you to think this, that everything you have to sing, everything you have to say is important to you. It's important to us. So, and this song especially, its message is so deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this character has been there and seen things and she's singing about it. So tell us in the best characterization you could do, and this could be very personal that you're singing this, but show us the light and sing gently with the face, head and neck forward. Don't change anything. Don't sit on the notes heavier. Don't do anything to shift that. But give yourself a chance to sort of make everything you're singing equally important. Okay. Okay. Start again from the top. Though the night is black as my skin, there's a light burning bright, showing me the way. But I know where I've been. There's a cry. In the distance, it's a voice that comes from deep within. There's a cry asking why. I pray the answers are for Because I know where I've been. Can we discuss? Yes. <laughs> How did you feel? I felt more okay. So I, I don't want I don't want to sound redundant and say open. Sorry if you hear my dog, but um, my chest felt more open as I tried to make sure that my head didn't like bow down or like come down as I stayed up. Like I said, my chest felt more open, and I also felt more present. If that makes sense. A hundred percent how I felt too. It felt like you were really feeling the lyrics you were singing because remember those lyrics are on musical notes. So there's a lot going on at one time. It's a vocal thing. It's a musical thing. It's an acting thing. So everything started feeling like it was coming from you to us as opposed to when you're dropping down, it almost becomes apologetic in a way. You're saying, I'm sorry, I don't have that note, or I'm sorry, I don't have the sound quality you would wanna hear. If anything, it takes all of that away and just gives it some opening. So you did beautifully, and I really appreciate your performance. Yay! 
yeah, I, I definitely felt the difference. So thank you. Yeah, I felt it too. Yeah, and please keep going with your work. It changed so immediately. Imagine if you did ongoing work on your voice and then connected that work with whatever song you feel very connected to. Mm -hmm. Much love to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so, so welcome. <laughs> Amazing work, Kiara. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing. That was lovely, Kiara. Thank that you. Was so lovely. Okay, so I'm going to pop you out. Thank you. And now we are going to be joined by Maria Jose. Yay. Yay. She's alive. I'm telling you, She's this alive. is the greatest thing that could have ever happened. It's I would, I would not be in the least bit embarrassed. I'd be like, I just showed a lot of people what would probably happen to them when they do that. <laughs> be warned, this may happen to you. It's like you saw it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, I, I think um, you might have um, heard that or, it, or words, English. Um, that yes, to me, it's very telling and it's almost it's probably psychosomatic to the to the crippling fear that I mentioned in terms of like where I've right. been. And I, I, just I'm aware of this. I'm yes, going to I, pop out as we get into it. Okay, um, I'm aware of that, and what I'd love to share with you, it's my absolute always joy to support all the different nervous situations that come up for people when they're singing. It is very vulnerable. It is very, very open. We're all always over analytical about what comes out of us, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been singing for, you know, 50 years. So you have to say to yourself, where am I today? And how is this going to get better and better and better the more I look at what happens to me? And so for you, the reason I wanted to do those repeated note exercises, which at some point hopefully you'll get to jump on and do, is that they calm the nervous system down. Yes. So you're already kind of wired into your body before you go to make sound. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever happens henceforth, you're going to have some really good tools with which to use. All right. Tell me what you're going to be singing and from where. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be singing Cabaret from Cabaret. That's uh, really great. Okay. Yeah, I think it's appropriate for, for the times we're experiencing. Yes. Right. All right. Yeah, and, and I would say just take a minute to breathe and just like shake out your body and just kind of find yourself in a room, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever you're ready, just hit record, hit, hit play, and we're ready to go. All right. I think of Elsie to this very day. I remember how she turned to me and said, What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music. Play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. Put down the knitting, the book, and the broom. It's time for a holiday. Life is a cabaret, old chum. So come to the cabaret and ask for me, ask for me. I made my mind up back in Chelsea when I go. I'm going like Chelsea. Start by admitting from cradle to tomb. Be sent that long a stay. Life is a cabaret old time. It's only a cabaret old time. And I love a cabaret. Well done. You did it. You did it. You got it out of you. 
<laughs> How do you feel? Oh, it's it's hard to go away, Cabaret, just for one second. Um, it's it's hard to to quiet down the critic as you're singing, and that's something that I'm I've been constantly working on, let alone with acting, but with singing. So I I caught myself losing the accompaniment, and then at that point you're not thinking about breath and you're not supporting yourself. So I, like I I can hear the strain of the note. I like. I'm already like, I'm already like 50 comments a minute in YouTube, like, where's her breath coming to? Like, I'm all the trolls, you know? <laughs> well, clearly I'm not even needed here. <laughs> right? <clears throat> you are such a self-critic that you're, you're already doing all the work you're thinking is gonna come at you. And as a result is, I'm gonna basically quote you right back. When we, when the self-critic creeps in, and it's so hard for it not, especially in the midst of insane social media. But here's the thing. When we're talking about you and your body, your mind, your voice, your soul, your spirit, ultimately your performance, it's not about anybody else. And it's not about what anybody else has to say. It's about your artistry and how you're feeling and how it felt to you. And doesn't matter anybody else. It really doesn't. Um, it ends up mattering because we end up reading things that we really shouldn't be reading in the first place. Right. Um, we don't need to know anything that anybody has to say because probably it's mere projections of what's going on with them that they're not dealing with. So, and that's that. Their psychotherapy. That's a psychotherapy. One minute. So, what I would say to you is one. Try not to get away from the accompaniment. Let it inform what's happening because I think what happens is your acting wants to take you faster than the accompaniment is providing. Therefore, you're, you're in this breath quagmire because you're kind of listening for what's coming and then having to jump in. So you're really not getting appropriate breath. What I'd like to ask you to do for our work together, and it's hopefully it feels comfortable for you, is... Why don't we start with, uh, from the beginning of what good is sitting alone in your room, even however you sing it, without the accompaniment. Let's just do it so that nothing is holding you back and you're not tethered to something that might not be serving you in the moment. Yes. All right. So even just a little bit of it, and I'm just going to, I want you to give yourself the space. Let's pretend that social media never existed. Wonderful. Great. It never existed. Um, because honestly, how many times a day do we all say, I am getting off of Facebook. I am getting off of Instagram. I am not going to pay attention to anything anymore. And then five minutes later, you're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We're, we got addicted to something that does not help us. And it certainly doesn't help our breathing. Because I think we get very like, ah, 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 from the minute we get on social media before we even read anything. So I want you to like take a deep breath into your nose. Exhale everything out of you on just anything you want. Ah, you could sigh, let it out. Wow. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if anything, you know what's a really great thing to do is do, can you do a lip trill, a silent lip trill? Like, you could do it with sound. Or with no sound. That just relaxes the throat. And it's such a full exhale. It gets everything that's like trapped in there out of you. Very good. Now, go ahead and whenever you're ready, just sing however you want to start it and just let it be an acting exercise for you. And you're in a small room and there's just the class there and everyone has been through the same thing you're going through. So we're all with you. What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. Put down the knitting, the book, and the broom. It's time for a holiday. Life is a cabaret, old chum. So come to the cabaret. And as for me, as for me, I made my mind up. Back in Chelsea, when I go, 
I'm going like Elsie. Start by admitting from cradle to tomb. It isn't that long a stay. Like this, a cabaret old chum. It's only a cabaret old chum. And I love a cabaret. That was a whole new person. <laughs> Could you feel it? Yes, it's, it's it's it reminds me of what it used to feel like. Of, sorry. Um, no, no, no. This is all part of it. There are tears every day when I work. Every single day. Join the crowd. I'm so proud of you. Honestly, I feel like you have to take all the attachments to the outer and the inner critic out. And then it doesn't matter if it's like completely in tune while you're in process. It's more like getting it out of you so that you don't judge it until you're done as opposed to judging it as it's happening. That's too piecemeal. And then we end up not, we get like minimal characterization for like a couple of lines here and there, but not the whole of the song. So the brilliance of what you just did is you didn't connect yourself to the music that you were being very sort of hesitant about. We took out the hesitancy and the reticence about singing and you just were like, oh, what the heck? And what the <laughs> heck gave us some sound that actually reminded you of what it felt like before you got so self-critical. So keep working on quieting the voices I, I absolutely recommend, if you aren't already doing it, some yoga, even gentle 20-minute yoga, some meditation, just where you're breathing and just listening to your breath. That's why I do the whole breathing sequence in the beginning, is to kind of calm everything down so everything quiets, and then you open up your mouth to sing, and you don't have a 1,000 people in your head, most right. of whom are pieces of you. So... <laughs> Keep doing the work, do the work on yourself. The voice is in you and it's there and it tunes up when you let go of all the critique. Yeah. So thank you for your work today. Thank you, Liz, thank you. It's my absolute that pleasure. That was beautiful, Maria Jose. Really thank beautiful, you so much Maria Jose. Family. Thank you, everyone. You, you're all so kind. I'm like popping up on my flowers. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all, all this is all part of it, you know? Every person with whom I've worked, celebrity or non-celebrity, has gone through where singing brings, it hits all the triggers you didn't even know you had. I can't even, I won't name names, but I'm going to let you know that I've had people literally laugh and cry at the same time while I'm getting sounds out of them to prepare them for something really major. And they have to like shake it out and keep crying, keep laughing and get through it. And then the nervous system goes, okay, I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> so let yourself get to that place. Thank you so much. All the very best to you. Thank you for singing for Thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And now I'm going to pop you out, Maria Jose. Thank you so much. And we have one final participant. I'm so excited to bring Gloria back. Hi. Hi, Gloria. Hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. <laughs> okay, Amazing. tell me what you're singing and from where. I'm going to be singing Everything Else Goes Away um, from Next to Normal. Great. Whenever you're ready. Okay. And you play till it's perfect. You play till you ache. You play till the strings, oh, your finger and nails break. So you rock that recital and get into Yale. So you won't feel so sick and you won't look so pale. Cause you've got your full ride and you early admit so you're done with the school and with all of this shit. And you graduate early, you're gone as of May. And there's nothing your paranoid parents can and say and you know that it's just a sonata away and you play 
and you play and everything else goes away everything else goes away everything else goes away thank you for that that was beautiful how do you thank you, thank you. <laughs> i'm shaking all over <laughs> you? i'm glad to hear it. it's hard to see that happening here what i think i can help you with even with that is i, I made little notes i've been making notes the whole time everyone's been singing but what I wrote was number one, allow yourself. These are all fragmented thoughts initially. So you could definitely take breaths. There are places where you just kept going, 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 and you can allow yourself to breathe. So that's one. The other thing is that I think probably because nerves kicked in, your head lifted up and you were a little bit like off your spine. So I think that made it harder to get breath. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and then I actually wrote too much singing. You were trying too hard to sing. And then I wrote, I wrote at the very end when you're singing, everything else goes away. The last three times you did it, I wrote check mark, check mark, check mark. <laughs> like I want you to almost go back again to the beginning, uh, and I want you to sing the whole. I want you to almost not sing. I want you to sort of speak sing the whole uh -huh. song the exact way when you got to the end where you're thinking, oh my god, I'm almost at the end here. <laughs> <laughs> because those okay. last three lines were perfectly in tune and you weren't hyper singing or thinking that you had to work so hard. So this is such an acting piece over a singy, singy song. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself just to like speak and let the pitch come through the lyrics. Okay. These are the things I'm thinking about. So let's talk about it again. Make sure you give yourself permission to breathe. Try not to lift the head up and stay really connected to your spine with your head. And then try not to oversing at all. Don't think that here it is, this person sang this on the recording. I'm so familiar with it. Let it let it not be that. Let it be this is my interpretation of these lyrics. And I want the end of the song, how perfectly that was. Perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. I want that to be reflected from the very beginning. Okay. All right. Let's do it Thank again. You. Of okay. course. Sorry, I'm just going to cue this. Yep. And you play till it's perfect. You play till you ache. You play till the strings or your fingernails break. So you'll rock that recital and get into Yale. So you won't feel so sick and you won't look so pale. Cause you've got your full ride and your early admit. So you're done with this school and with all of this shit. Then you graduate early, you're gone as of May. And there's nothing your paranoid parents can say. And you know that it's just a sonata away, and you play, and you play, and everything else goes away, everything else goes away, and everything else goes away. What do you think? I think I tried to breathe more. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <And sing> less. <laughs> it felt yeah. more like a, like a monologue with like stuff in the back. That's exactly right. And that's what this piece is really about. You can't try to sing with so, so many lyrics. You already have your voice. You already have your vocal quality. You want to just use that into speaking the lyrics in song. Now, the last time, interestingly, everything else kind of really started tuning up when you stopped singing so hard in the beginning and you got breath, just the very last lines, which were really spot on the first time, you got a little too complacent on them. Okay. So just be aware that you need to, it's a tricky, it's a tricky balance of trying to calm yourself down. It's, you know, I, I say this all the time. We want the actor relaxed, 
so the character can be engaged. Mm. So if the actor is like, woo, 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 I'm nervous, here comes uh, everything, and there's like fight or flight, fight or flight, and then you start singing, the character is not going to be able to catch up and you're not going to be able to drop in. Can you even just sing for me the last everything else goes away and just like feel like they're, they're kind of controlled exhales for you? Okay. And everything else goes away. Everything else goes away. Everything else goes away. Yeah, that's when the breath is your friend. It's we inhale and when we sing, we're actually singing on a controlled exhale. So that's that breathing that we did in the beginning where we're inhaling mm -hmm. through the nose and like shh, and then so it's using the breath. You almost have to calculate for each phrase you're singing how much you think you're gonna need and not over inhale or over dump out the breath. So all of that made mm. such a difference in the whole entire second performance of the song. Thank you. You're so welcome. Things to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it got so much better when you got a chance to think, not too much singing, not over sing it. Let just the voice that you already possess take us on that ride. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your participation. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and I'm help so us. I'm so happy. I'm so <laughs> happy. It was a joy to work with you and everyone. That Thank was gorgeous, you. Gloria. Thank you so much. You. I'm going to pop you out. All the best to you. Oh my goodness, Liz, these transformations that we just saw. That they was were quick. really significant and I'm really proud of those, those women. So proud of them. Incredible. Um, now we have a few minutes left for one or two questions from anyone who's currently watching on YouTube. If you have a question, a question for the masterful Liz Kaplan. Thank please, you, Jenny. Yeah, very masterful. I'm now thinking I need to start singing. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not someone who's a singer at all. Let's do it. Let's make it work. Okay. Um, well, I have one question then as we wait to see if anyone's going to pop one into the chat. Um, how do you how do you start as a non-singer getting back into singing? Where where is the way where is the way that feels safe and comfortable to get into this kind of scary first go at singing again? I think that's such an important question. You know, I I think also based on what we talked about in the class today, it's what does scare you about singing? What happens to you when you start singing? What does your mind say? How does your body manifest the crazy that's coming into your mind? And then trying to maneuver through that, which is why seriously, I've, I can't remember the last time I ever started an actual lesson or class or coaching without that whole breathing series. And there's more things I do, but I knew we had limited time. Right. Um, and I wanted to get everybody into a relaxed state. So by the time they open their mouth to start putting sounds and body and notes together, they felt more grounded in their person. Mm -hmm. So how people can get started is I highly recommend um, getting a coach, a teacher mm -hmm. or a coach. Uh, you want somebody patient. You want to make sure you feel comfortable. Um, I did this. I did this little mini speech on Instagram at the top of the pandemic um, when I was going to be speaking on a podcast, and what I said was so meaningful to me, which is why I wanted to communicate it with everyone. Which is the thing I would say is a beginning singer or someone who sang in the past and is revisiting it again. You want to feel safe in the room with the teacher or instructor mm -hmm. or coach or whomever is working with you. If there's an element of fear or fight or flight or any discomfort whatsoever, don't second guess yourself and literally run, run for the hills. I, I've been saying <laughs> that for years. Say to yourself, there's gotta be somebody else who has the time and the patience to say, oh, this person has not experienced singing a note this is what it feels like. And let's see if their pace and how they want to show you these things matches the pace in which you're able to, you know, input, 
process and retain that information. Right, finding a good match for you and being honest with yourself about what is working for you and what is not. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. And for the exercises that you showed us today, Amber Pickens asks, how often should we practice them? These are exercises that you could do daily. Certainly the breathing you could do, not only daily, but you could do it a couple of times a day. I have people sometimes doing it, you know, obviously before our classes, I have them do it again before their rehearsal begins. I have people do it in their dressing room before they go on stage. And then I have them do it as a cool down at the end of the evening um, so that they're not, they're not going home with their nervous system mm -hmm. all shaky, 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 and then having to like crash into sleep, but just kind of like gently kind of lying down. Mm -hmm. And then the, the singing exercises, certainly the ones we did today are very, very, um, gentle and based in just like hear the notes this is what's moving you could do these absolutely once a day amazing and kayla asks any tips for jaw tension interesting um jaw tension is an interesting thing with singing so the thing i will say first is that usually when people have jaw tension their jaws are like super tight and usually grinding teeth at night and then you spend the whole morning trying to unhinge your jaw mm -hmm. and it just doesn't want to go. Interestingly, the EU exer the MIU EU exercises were completely put together to like the E, the me is literally probably where your jaw starts off in mm -hmm. the first place. And then we go, ooh, and it helps pull the jaw down. So if you're having any TMJ um, and issues with the jaw, the first thing also is that the tongue when the jaw is tight also is pulling back mm -hmm. so you might want to even approach the jaw by first doing the tongue stretches we did tonight and then do the exercises and i think we could get at the jaw tension in two different ways amazing and i know we probably have a lot of tmj sufferers in, oh. in the chat everyone yeah you know what it is it's like it, it, again a lot of it is holding your phone and talking mm -hmm. and like all of that but the other thing is is that we're a smiley bunch of people entertainers. So we, we forget that you have to kind of go and let me release this <laughs> and feel what neutral feels like so that you could get to that place when you need that place. Right. And I think we have time for one last question. So how does one find one's own vocal sound? A beautiful question. That's a very beautiful question. My feeling is one, we, we want to try to not imitate singers, artists that we've listened to and maybe sung with and imitated them. Although the sincerest form of flattery, as we all know, you wanna find your own sound and how you do that is through the work we began today, which is experiencing vowels and direction of the jaw, the direction of the larynx, that um, finding what the chest vibration feels like what the sinus vibration feels like, what the skull vibration feels like, and actually singing and vocalizing along with notes mm -hmm. until you feel yourself literally drop in. When I say drop in, it's sort of like, it feels like your voice and your body are located in the exact same place. And from there, you continue on with vocal work. And that's how you start finding, I used to call it sculpting sounds where mm -hmm. it's like, Give me a lump of clay of some of somebody that has never sung, and let's find out where that person's natural singing voice is or speaking voice, and say how can we carry that into your singing sound. Gorgeous. I and I hope everyone who is watching with us today and our three amazing student participants all continue their work to find their own voice and their own sound as everyone continues singing. What yes, and what I would love to add, if anybody is interested, is. I do have apps in the app store that have very sort of like teeny versions of different exercises so that you could get started doing that. And as a result of that, you could decide where you'd like to go from there. Perfect. So Liz, thank you so much for taking the time to teach this masterclass. You are phenomenal. Thank you so much, Jenny. And thank you for moderating and for without even trying, talking me into doing this. Of course, <laughs> you had to. For everybody who should know this, there was no saying no to Jenny. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to have this class. It was, it was amazing. I think we changed some lives in the chat. I certainly hope so. I think we did. And for anyone who enjoyed the class, 
please make sure that you are subscribed to the American Theater Wing's YouTube channel. We have another masterclass coming up on August 26th, a Thursday at 6.30 p.m. ET, and it's with Ashley Park, the incredible performer on musical theater audition technique. So I hope everyone will join us then. And thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you all.